Hello, in this lecture we are going to take a look at the revaluation model and then we are also going to see the illustrative example. So revaluation model is one of the two models for the subsequent measurement of property plan and equipment. Here an asset shall be carried at revalued amount that is calculated as fair value at the date of revaluation, less any subsequent accumulated depreciation, less any subsequent impairment losses. Revaluations shall be made with sufficient regularity, for example annually, when there are some significant and volatile changes in fair values. For some assets, less frequent revaluations might be acceptable, mostly when market conditions do not change rapidly. The most important thing is that if an item of property plan and equipment is revalued, then the entire class of property plan and equipment to which this item belongs must be revalued. Class is simply grouping of assets of similar nature and use in an entity's operations. For example, aircrafts or lands, ships, machinery and any other examples. These would represent separate classes of assets. In practice, it might be difficult and time consuming to set fair values of all assets in the same class on one date. So certain short period for evaluation is permitted. Accounting treatment of revaluations depends on whether the carrying amount of an asset increased or decreased. When the carrying amount increased, then this increase should be credited in equity or other comprehensive income under the heading revaluation surplus. However, if the same asset was impaired before an impairment loss was recognized in profit or loss, Increase in carrying amount shall be credited in income to the extent of reversal of such impairments. Decrease in carrying amount shall be debited in expenses in profit or loss, but analogically, if the asset was previously revalued to revaluation surplus, then the decrease in the carrying amount shall be debited in equity to the extent of reversing such revaluation surplus. And to clarify that, let's look to numerical example. X Butlers decided to apply revaluation model for its buildings. In 2OX0, company acquired building in France with cost of 600,000 currency units. Accumulated depreciation of this building was 100,000 currency units as of 31st December 2OX4, and its useful life is 30 years in total. Straight line depreciation method is used. However, market value of building proved to be 550,000 currency units as at 1st January 2OX5. How would X Butlers treat this revaluation in its financial statements in 31st December 2OX5? Then, after one year and as a result of the world financial crisis, the value of building went sharply down to 350,000 currency units. What will X Bottlers recognize in its financial statements as of 31st December 2OX6? Now, let's firstly take a look to the increase in the carrying amount in 2OX5. Carrying amount before revaluation is cost of 600,000, less accumulated depreciation of 100,000, so that's 500,000 currency units. Fair value of building is its market value of 550,000. And here we have an increase in carrying amount by 50,000 currency units that is recognized directly in equity or other comprehensive income. Now, let me warn you about one complication that arises in the case of revaluations with depreciation. Currently, depreciation based on revalued amount is calculated as revalued amount of 550,000 divided by the remaining useful life of 25 years, that is charge of 22,000 currency units in profit or loss. But depreciation based on original cost would be 600,000 divided by 30 and that is charge of 20,000. So the difference of 2,000 currency units should be transferred from revaluation surplus to retained earnings and therefore the final balance of revaluation surplus at the end of 2OX5 is 48,000 currency units. Now, 
decrease in carrying amount in 2OX6. Revaluation amount of building at the end of 2OX6 before revaluation is 528,000 currency units, which is fair value of 550,000 less one year depreciation of 22,000. New fair value is building's market value of 350,000 and therefore carrying amount decreased by 178,000 currency units. So how are we going to treat this decrease? First, we have to take out all remaining revaluation surplus related to this building. So we debit 48,000 currency units in other comprehensive income or equity. Secondly, remaining decrease is recognized directly in profit or loss. This is the end of this lecture. Bye.